Hi, I'm George and welcome to GMakes, and this is how to make a fully procedural audio visualizer using geometry nodes in Blender 3.0. Let's get right to it. So we're going to select the default cube. We're not going to delete it yet. Uh, we're going to open up a new space down here and I'm going to go to the geometry node editor and we're going to add a new geometry node. And now just because we're going to delete the default cube and we're going to add in a icosphere. Um, the reason I'm using an icosphere uh, for this instead of a regular sphere is that uh, this whole process uh, is based on uh, points, uh, which are vertices. So an icosphere has nice vertices all around. I can even divide that once more. It just looks a little more like a sphere. You can see they're all evenly distributed. It's all triangles and they're all nice. Uh, if we use a UV sphere, um, it's just a little messier because, uh, let's actually see that. A little messier because you have like this one at the top and then they're all very close and they're not evenly spread out because they get wider as it goes down because it's in bands and rings. Uh, so we're just going to use an icosphere. There we go. Uh, and now uh, the basic idea of this, like I said, is using points. Um, and so the way to do that is we're not going to do points and faces or anything since this already has point data, uh, like I said, all the vertices. So we really just need to instance on points. And we can't see anything right now. And uh, I am going to use, uh, I'll use cubes for this example. I know in my render it has uh, spheres. I used uh, some UV spheres because I like how that looks. Uh, but we're going to use some cubes just to see some things. So we're going to plug that in instance and whoa, too big. <laughs> um, now we can scale this. You can scale it in this basic, uh, in the original mesh data. I like scaling it here. Um, as you can see, it's nice. Um, and then just we set that to one just to make things a little easier. Uh, I'm going to go to vec uh, insert a vector math node. Uh, and set that to scale and plug that into my scale and that just I've set all these to one uh, and that just allows me to have one slider to control the scale uh, which I like a lot better than having to try to make those all equal or click and drag or anything like that so we have our this is a setup this is all we have um, and the reason why we are doing it this way and not something like uh, mesh to points, which gives us the same result. You see nothing changed there. Um, and you can even see if we just look at these points, we don't need this. Um, and the reason we don't want to do this is because this mesh to points converts our mesh into points. Um, and that's not what we want to do because we still want this mesh data uh, to control these points to control how far in the offset of these points. So we're going to not use that. We'll just take whatever mesh you want. I'm starting with an icosphere. Instance that so all the points that are on the vertices uh, then get put out uh, into our geomet new geometry and then uh, choose something to instance. In this case, I'm using a cube, but that it can be anything. You can model something and choose that. Um, next things next is the thing that makes this work. So uh, we are starting with a set position node. We're going to put that before we instance our points just because uh, we want to control the, the points from the mesh, not these instances. Uh, and now we have this offset, which is really great. And that's what we want to do. We want to offset these points from the space shape. Uh, but if we move these all at once, you can see it, it moves them all at once. <laughs> or we can move one and it moves along the Y, we move along the X move along the Z. It's moving them all in the same direction at the same time, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we don't want that. We want this to expand and contract. Uh, so I'm going to do another vector math node just to control the scale again. Make it a little easier. Just have one button to control all three and that way it's even. Um, it's not doing anything because these need to be set to one. And now you can see I have that scale set that back to zero to be our default position uh, and now the thing that allows us to scale is a normal node 
And this just takes the normal of all of those points uh, in relation to our base mesh. Uh, and so that's going to be like, imagine a whole bunch of quills sticking out like a porcupine, and it will go just along those lines. Each, each point will have its own individual uh, axis to move on, essentially, its own individual little rail. So if we plug that into our vector, um, nothing's changed because we have anything scaled, but look at that. Now we can scale along our meshes normals and along these points normals. Um, and you want to make sure all that happens uh, early, and that's why we also don't convert this uh, icosphere or whatever our mesh is to points because then we lose that mesh data, we lose those normals. And we also, uh, if you're having a curve or something, you want to convert that to a mesh so that we get these points and we get this normal, uh, able to use this normal node. Uh, and yeah, that's that's the basis of this. Um, I'll keep this pretty simple. Another uh, thing you can do uh, real quick is, and why I have cubes here, is you can see they're cubes, but they're all pointing in the same direction. So uh, if I even bring my scale way down, um, you can see they're all just pointing in the same direction. Uh, so to change that, if you want a little more stylized, we can take an align Euler to vector. We can plug this into the rotation. Not going to change anything right now. Uh, but then we want to take uh, this normal node again and plug that into our rotation. Uh, plug that into our rotation. There we go. And you can see that changes them all to rotate along the normals. Right now it's set to X. Uh, but you can mess around and see which one works best for you. There's Y, and there's Z. Um, I like Z. It's hard to see with this view, so let me actually uh, scale us back up. And we're going to scale down a little bit. And we're going to make it one more subdivision to 3. Um, and there we go. So you can see... You can kind of see the shape of all of these, and this controls how much that turn is. Here's Y and X. Um, and that's just, just a nice little extra thing you can do. Um, you can also plug that into the vector position, that normal, and that will give you this effect of like cubes actually uh, on the shape of the icosphere or whatever. So you can see, again, if we bring this down a little bit, like now the cubes are actually in the shape of the sphere, and then you can bring it up. Uh, and you can do that along all of them. I like Z on this. But you can see they actually kind of mold to the shape. Uh, and that's very nice, and that's a very cool effect. Um, it only really matters with cubes. Anything else, not super important. Anyway. Uh, so, now that we have uh, this fun little thing we can control, how do we animate it um, specifically to sound uh, as an audio visualizer? Like maybe it's a cool sci-fi AI or something. Uh, so, to do that, we're going to make sure we're at the start, at our first frame, and we're going to hit I. We're going to go over the scale. I like setting it back to 1 just because, but you don't need to. And we're going to hit I to create a keyframe. And now you can't see anything down here, but if you select it, you can see we have one keyframe. Uh, and now we're going to go to the timeline. Oop, not the timeline. We're going to go to the graph editor uh, and make sure we have this scale selected because if we have nothing or a different node selected, nothing's going to appear. So make sure we have the scale node selected. And geometry nodes pops up. And there we go, default value of scale. Uh, and so here is our timeline. Uh, down here with our graph editor and we're gonna hit N to open up this side panel and we're going to uh, add sound to this uh, to bake it but you can see if you wanted to you could just add like a noise modifier um, and you can see it's vibrating <laughs> uh, if we bump the strength up of that you can see it's really that's not fun so let's make that a little smoother um, but you can see it works. Uh, it's an offset from that shape. You could just do that. I don't want that though. I want it to be sound. So I'm going to go to key up here and bake sound to F curves. Uh, but first I'm going to make sure I am at the start, the first frame of my timeline. Uh, and now bake sound to F curves. 
and we're going to go to my folder. I have Beethoven again right here, which is what I used for the intro. Um, and now if we play it, uh, it's not doing a whole bunch. Uh, and that's because you can see this is not very strong. Um, there's kind of three separate ways you can fix this. Um, if you're not getting a lot of motion, uh, you could, of course, change the overall scale uh, to be very small. Um, one way is to, again, use a vector math node um, and set that to multiply and put that in between your scale and your set position and choose some number like, let's do 10 to make it really obvious. Um, and now if I play, you can see it scaled it up. Uh, the only downside of this is that if you want specific minimums or want to keep more of the actual like curve of something, because this just multiplies everything uh, by 10. Um, but the fun thing with this then is that you can multiply certain axes by 10. Um, so if instead I want everything except for uh, the Y, you can see like now the Y is just changing or I could set uh, the Z to change. We'll do 10, and now it's going vertical. Um, so that's something really cool that you can do with that. Uh, modification, now it's by zero. So I'm just going to mute that. Uh, but what if you just want to change the sound? Uh, again, we click the scale, so we come back here. Um, one way to do it is to go to key again and unbake the curve, um, and then scale SY, scale along the Y axis. Uh, and you can see now it's going to be much bigger. Um, the only downside to this method is now that this is all keyframe data, you can see that down here, which is nice. You can modify it if you want, but you can see uh, it deletes everything afterwards because that's not being used. So if I want to make this uh, animation longer with the same song, uh, you would just have to delete this and re-import it, and it's just annoying. Um, so instead, what you can do to make sure you keep this a little more procedural is we can add a modifier and add an envelope or an envelope, however you want to say it. Make sure we're at a start frame and then add a control point. Um, and now this will control kind of the where that starts and you can see you can stretch it. Uh, so you just want to make sure these are opposites uh, that they counteract so that they're the same number. And there you can see we have it uh, stretched out nice and big so that way when we play there we go. Um, and now just uh, in case you want to hear your playback, since this is just uh, animation data and there's no sound coming through, uh, there's maybe a couple ways to do this. I'm not quite sure, but the way that I do it, that's pretty simple, is if you go to the video editing setup, uh, make sure you're at your start frame, and then navigate uh, up here uh, to wherever you keep your song, have that back in, and then just drag that down. Uh, and make sure on playback, uh, you can have scrubbing enabled. If you have some dialogue or text or someone speaking that you want to try to just be able to hear where like something is. So as you scrub, since I have music, it's not going to sound like much. Uh, but, um, and I, uh, uh, I hope you can hear that in the recording too. Um, but either way, I'll edit indefinitely afterwards um, or something, but you can definitely hear now uh, if the video is capturing it. Uh, it should be playing along with, uh, and even if you can't hear in my video, it should come up in yours. Uh, that's just a quick, simple way to get that to go. Um, but yeah, that's how to make a audio visualizer uh, fully procedurally. Um, like you can change anything, uh, you can change this icosphere, you can change, first of all, you can change the subdivisions to give it so much <laughs> more geometry that computer's going to hate it. Um, oh yeah, another thing you can do, um, is realize your instances, uh, before your output, after you do it, this, um, will just make those become actual, to tell the computer they're actually there. Uh, and then also you can set a material, um, if you want to make it cool. Uh, you can also use a join geometry node, uh, join geometry. If say I want this icosphere to be still the base mesh um, for it. And depending on how your music works out, you might need to transform this sphere to be smaller or bigger. Just make sure you do that uh, on this 
on this string, nothing on this way, but on this path, make sure you can transform it. Um, but like I said, you can change, it's fully procedural. So this icosphere, I could change to a cube uh, like we had in the beginning. Could not, could have kept around the default cube and used that. Uh, and look at, now there's only four points on a cube, uh, but you can see even then they're still aligning to the normals of that cube. And if we play, it's going to, and of course you can change the vertices on the cube to make some weird funky stuff. Um, and another cool one I like is if you go to a mesh uh, circle and use that as your basis, uh, it's just, you just get a nice ring and that looks really cool. Well, that was how to make a fully procedural audio visualizer using geometry nodes in Blender 3.0. I hope you liked the tutorial, I hope you learned something, and I hope you make something cool with it. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any ideas or suggestions for future videos or little things you'd like to see me experiment with in Blender, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!